Hello and welcome to the Car Care channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the best and worst used Toyota hybrids to buy. Hybrids are becoming extremely popular these days and many people are looking at the new ones. They're all very expensive and turning around to the older ones and they're wondering, well, what's good and what's not? Well, in this video, we're going to be covering all of that and more. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, Welcome, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some other videos if you are a returning subscriber. Well, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos and without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting with the best used Toyota hybrids to buy, and let's specify the categories here. The cars that are going to be recommended here are middle-aged Toyota hybrids, the ones that are out of warranty, basically ones that are five years and older. We're also going to cover some highlights in the oldies or the older models. Starting off with the middle-aged Toyota hybrids, a highlight in this segment is going to be your 2012 and up Toyota Camry, 2013 and up. Toyota Avalon Hybrid. These are fabulous models. They really get good gas mileage. They happen to have a third generation hybrid system, which is very reliable. But when that generation started in the Prius, eh, they had some issues. We'll talk about those in a little bit. But in those two cars, it seems like they were really good. I've seen many examples with a lot of miles and they hold up very well. And they're actually, overall, the car itself is also a very nice car. However, there's one thing you need to know about these before you just jump on the first one and buy it. Maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. Particularly two very important things on these that make them very good or very bad. The first thing is oil changes. These are the uh, wonderful years of the 10,000 mile oil changes. And we're not going to get into that too deep, but 5,000 mile oil changes on these. Service history, complete service history, specifically on the oil changes. Otherwise, they do tend to burn oil if they're, not, if they're neglected and not taken care of. The second thing is, and this, is, this applies to all the hybrids in this segment. Few years beginning in this, these two cars did not have hybrid fan filters. And briefly, if you're not familiar with that, the hybrid battery has a little fan that cools the battery. In the earlier years, there was no filter, just dust and debris clogged the fan and that overheated the battery and that basically destroyed the battery. Well, later on, Toyota realized, hmm, maybe we should put a filter. So they started putting filters somewhere around to, between 2012, 2013 in most models, but some of them didn't really get the cut until 14, 15. So the main thing is you gotta check that filter. It's so important, and I make such a big deal about it in my channel. Every time we talk about hybrids, it is very important that you check it. If you're going to buy a used one, look at the filter. If it's solid clock, walk away. It's not worth it. In the SUV land of Toyota hybrids, the RAV4, specifically the 2016 to 2018, is a standout in reliability. It also has third generation hybrid system. It is very reliable and overall the car that the hybrid system is attached to is also very reliable. However, same thing applies. Lesser on the maintenance. These don't seem to be so prone to burning oil, although they have the similar engine. It is slightly updated. However, you still want good service history and that fan filter is so important. I will leave a playlist in the description of this video if you're wondering how to service that model. I'm trying to make a full library of how to service Toyota Hyper fan filters for all Toyota models so you can do it yourself because most of them are so simple, you should actually be doing it yourself. The other SUV that is a highlight is 2014 and up, all the way till today actually, Highlander Hybrid. These are really good SUVs. In the early years, specifically 2008, 2009, all the way to like 2011, they were okay. However, the maintenance was high. The gas mileage was not what you call impressive. However, that might be okay for some because it is a big SUV after all. But the maintenance, having a timing belt and all this added maintenance, especially if you buy them now, everything's overdue, that could be an issue. That's why if you want to play it safe with the Highlanders, Basically get one with a 3.5 liter and up somewhere around 2011. That's when we started with the 2GR FXS attached to the hybrid system and then going all the way forward. However, as a car in general, 
I think the 2014 and up, it's a major improvement over the 2013. It feels very upscale, very nice car. And if you find one in good condition that has been taken care of, especially that fan filter, it is a very good buy. Now we can talk about Toyota hybrids without talking about the Mama hybrid, the Prius. Let's talk, let's dig into the Prius family of cars, because believe it or not, there is a Prius family. Mama Prius gave birth to many big and small Priuses. So let's talk about all of them. So the first one is the Prius V. The Prius V is actually a fabulous car. Unfortunately, they don't make them anymore, which is too bad because they are actually great. However, you'd want to start shopping for Prius Vs right around 2015 and up. We'll cover a little bit on that a little bit later in the video, but 2015 and up, Prius V is a fabulous car, as long as it, of course, has maintenance. Folks, you're, you're seeing the theme with Toyota hybrids. Maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. Doesn't mean it's very expensive maintenance. They're high maintenance cars. Actually, they're not, but you still want that maintenance. There are so many people out there that don't understand hybrids that they tend to neglect them unintentionally because they don't understand them. So maintenance is very important that you do do your due diligence on the maintenance research before you buy one. Another one in the Mama Prius family is the Prius C. Now the Prius C, all the years of the Prius C, they're actually very good hybrids. And the, the thing that makes them interesting is they used a similar engine from the second generation Prius, which had the second generation hybrid system, but integrated that into a third generation hybrid system. So it was kind of a old school, well, now it is old school too, the third generation hybrid system, but it is actually a very good small economy car. Many people bash it. Many people say all kinds of things about it. It's, it's a little eco box, uncomfortable, so loud. Yes, but if you don't mind that, you just literally want a very basic, a to B car, they're actually fabulous cars that don't have many issues. Of course, maintenance is a big thing with these, but they are really good. And you can't go wrong buying one of these if you don't mind how small they are, how basic they are, and they are a little bit on the loud side. And then of course, the Mama Prius, just the Prius, the original Prius. You cannot go wrong buying a 2015 and up, so that would be kind of a crossover between third generation, the last year of third generation Prius, into the new generation, like the one behind me, 2016 and up. These are really good cars. They are very purpose-built. The Priuses are not your average hybrids. That's why you have Camry Hybrid, Avalon, all the other models. The Prius is a purpose-built, efficient car. They, they do that very brilliantly, but they don't do other stuff very well. And that's why people bash them all the time. They just don't understand them. And that's okay. They have that odd shape, They all this stuff, but don't shy away from the Prius because 2015 and up, and we're gonna talk about why the rest of the third generation is not very high on my recommendation in a little bit, but 2015 and up, don't be afraid of these cars, folks. They are good cars as long as you do your due diligence. I have many videos. Other people on the internet have a lot of good videos explaining how hybrids work, what to know about them, what's what. Educate yourself before jumping into a hybrid because if you make the good purchase on a hybrid, you're gonna be very happy, they're very efficient, they're very reliable, and they're overall good cars, but they are very misunderstood, and that's unfortunate. Now let's talk about the uh, not so good Toyota hybrids. And unfortunately, these are models that are scattered across the board. Let's start with the first one, possibly in my book, the worst one, or could be the best one. Depends. Let's talk about that for a bit. 2010 and 2011 Prius. I have not seen more Toyota hybrids that fall apart completely to a point of totaling the whole car than the 2010 and 2011 Prius. And wait a second, before you jump on the comments and tell me that you have one with 250,000 miles and it's the best car you own, I agree because these cars were absolutely neglected. There were so many of them that were extremely neglected for whatever reason, I don't get it. Look, they have their common issues, namely oil consumption, head gasket issues, EGR problems, and catalytic converter problems, and the list goes on and on and on. However, I know of a single viewer, and I wish you are watching and you know who you are, with one particular 2011 
Prius with 138,000 miles, the last time I saw it. He've owned it almost since it was new, probably if my memory serves right, 7,000 miles. And the thing is perfect, doesn't do any of the things that I listed. But that is one out of 100,000 maybe, because every single 2010, 2011 Prius that shows up in the shop has one of these issues. Some of them have all of these issues combined. And then to add it all up, back in 2010s, hybrids were just starting to begin their popularity momentum. People still didn't understand them, didn't maintain them well. They didn't understand what's what. And so many people neglected them. They are possibly the worst to buy today. Unless you absolutely know who you're buying it from, completely avoid 2010 and 2011 Mama Prius. Now, in 2012, when Mama Prius got a slight update, a facelift, Things got a little better, but not great. We still have the oil burning problem. We still have the catalytic converter problems. So that completely got fixed in 2015. And the same thing for the Prius V, because the Prius V is basically the exact same thing as Mama Prius. So 2012 to 2014 Prius V, unfortunately, they had the same issues. The oil burning, EGR problems, head gasket problems and catalytic converters because of the oil burning, by the way. So to play it safe, and this applies today, if you've owned one since it was new and it's been great, I am very happy and I, and I appreciate you taking care of this car all this time. But unfortunately, so many people didn't that if you're in the market today to buy one of these, you're gonna have a hard time finding a good one. So avoid 2010, avoid 2011, Mama Prius. And if you really wanna play it safe, Avoid 2010 all the way to 2014 Prius, go with 15 and up, you're not going to be sorry because they're actually really good cars otherwise. Same thing with the Prius V, 2015 and up. The Prius V is actually a favorite of mine because it's such a good car, the pa whole package is very good. Now, let's. speaking of Mama Priuses, uh, this is going to come again before you jump in the comments, hear me out here. Avoid first generation and second generation Prius as of the date of filming this video. Look, first generation Prius was blasted for what it is. It was an experiment. It was a successful experiment. If people in 2010 still didn't understand hybrids and their maintenance and what to do, what not to do, imagine back in 2001, 2000, they really did not age well. And those that took care of them and loved them, they still have them and they still driving at 300,000 miles. But those that neglected them, they're offering them up for sale for a very cheap price. And you look at them and like, man, this gets great gas mileage. It could be a great car for my kid. Don't do that to yourself. Walk away, they're not worth it. Unless you really know the previous owner and you know that they took care of them. The second generation Prius. Again, you're gonna find them very cheap and they're extremely hard to find in good condition. And those that find in good condition, the owner won't sell it because it's actually a good car if you took care of it from day one. They are so hard to find in good condition. I would actually avoid them. And this advice, the next advice here, will apply to all the hybrid models. Whenever you find a Toyota hybrid that is too cheap, and doesn't have a lot of miles, but it's very cheap, significantly cheaper than all of the other ones. That's your cue to skip it. Don't buy the cheapest hybrid you can put your hand on because usually hybrids have a way when they're neglected over the years of totaling themselves very quickly. Buy ones that are taken care of and if you really don't wanna take chances here, avoid the first, second generation Prius because they were really the most not taken care of. And another car that it's actually a fabulous car and I can't believe that I am saying this in this video, but hear me out here. 2006 and 2007 Highlander Hybrid. Great car, but again, we go back to the same thing. So many people didn't understand them. You're really gonna have a hard time finding one that is in good condition today. If you do, power to you, it's actually a really good car otherwise. But so many people didn't take care of them and the Highlander Hybrid, the battery prices on these are so high compared to a Prius. You, you do not want to buy one with super high miles and just say, oh, it's a Toyota, it's a Highlander, let's go for it. Don't do that to yourself. You'll find them cheap here and there. 
But the nice examples of that exact year, 2006, 2007, they actually hold their value pretty well. So you ain't gonna find one cheap in those two years unless it's broken and ready to total itself. Now, the last one on the baddies list is your 2007 to 2011 Toyota Camry Hybrid. The, this is actually a very good car and it's actually a very good hybrid system that it has, but it's let down by one thing, the engine. Now, this is the same recommendation as 2007-2009 non-hybrid Toyota Camry 4-cylinder. They have the 2AZ engine. That engine has a design issue. It's very notorious to burn globs and globs of oil. And in this generation, it actually contributes to so much more because it's a hybrid and it just, it seems to get a lot worse than the non-hybrid version. So unless you can find one that the previous owner can present records that this was fixed because Toyota did fix these for free for some period of time. But of course, in these years, that's all expired now. If you can find one that has been 100% fixed by the dealership under that campaign, these are actually very good cars. However, again, we go back to the maintenance, it needs to be taken care of. And these are a little older now, especially if you go for an 07, this is the original Camry hybrid. The battery might be a little on the tire size. This is one that did not have a filter, so likely that fan is completely clogged. So be careful with these, and if you wanna play it safe, just avoid that generation, go to the 12 and up, find one with good maintenance history, find one that's taken care of, and you're not gonna be sorry, because hybrids can be really good, but if you're not careful, they can be really bad. So do your due diligence and do your research before you jump and buy one. Now, because of feedback from similar videos that I've done before from my awesome viewers, uh, let's talk about some highlights. Now, the highlights are gonna be the ones that are not exactly in the middle-aged uh, group here. Maybe they are a little newer, but those are hybrids that are really standouts right now. And particularly the fourth generation hybrid system. Folks, I was there in 2015 when the third generation Prius, 2010, turned five years old. And we have been inside so many of them for all kinds of problems, oil burning, EGR, IPM problems, and the list goes on and on. But this generation behind me, the 2016 and up, the fourth generation Prius, nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's one word to sum it. I think this generation actually, it drives better. It is much nicer. It is a lot more car-like. The previous generations, they were so light and you felt them. This one is no race car by any, by any chance. It has that wet shape. It is designed to save fuel. That's all it's doing. But it drives so much nicer. The interior is much nicer. It, it's very lightweight, but the interior doesn't feel cheap lightweight. It feels nice, decent for an economy car, lightweight. So this any car with this fourth generation hybrid system is really a standout because this has been a very solid generation with very, very little problems, if any, honestly. So this generation, of course, started in 2016 Prius and all the way till today, and then it moved over to the 2018 Camry all the way to today, and then it moved over to the 2019 Avalon and RAV4. Unfortunately, the Avalon is going out of production in 2022, so this might be your last chance to grab one. Fabulous cars have fourth generation, hybrid system. And then the Highlander in the year 2020 moved over to the fourth generation hybrid system with the four cylinder and a giant standout that is a new member on the club, actually two of them. One of them is the 2021 Toyota Sienna, of course, fourth generation hybrid system. And it is a ginormous minivan that gets over 30 miles per gallon. And it's very reliable. That's a standout in my book. And the other one is the return of the Toyota Venza, even though it looks nothing like the old Venza, but it returned in a much better suit. It is a hybrid now, again, fourth generation hybrid. When you buy a Toyota hybrid, you need to do a little bit more due diligence than your average car. The reason for that is the batteries, and you're, you're gonna read this all over the internet, they are expensive, they could break your bag, and this and that. But that's not entirely true. As long as you understand that the maintenance and reliability of hybrids overall is actually very low compared to a gasoline car. First, 
They don't have an alternator. They don't have a starter. Most of them actually don't have a drive belt. Most of them, the brakes last over 100,000 miles. So yes, you might reach 250,000 miles and then the battery goes and you have to buy one for $2,000, $3,000, whatever the case may be. To reach that 250,000 miles, you've spent so little on maintenance and repairs. It's okay. That, that's, that's what I'm trying to get here. And I'm not saying they last 250,000 miles. Some of them actually go to 400, 500,000 miles because the owner took care of this car, maintained it properly and knew what they were doing. Key thing here is maintenance, not excess maintenance where it's super expensive, good researched and informed maintenance is the key to your Toyota hybrid lasting a very long time. And then you look back and you realize wait a second, I drove this car 250, 300,000 miles and still runs like the day I bought it new. I'm just gonna keep going. And that's why sometimes it's hard to find older hybrids that are in good shape because owners just hold on to them because they're good cars. Simple, plain and simple. They're not thrilling, they're not exciting, all oh, that mumbo jumbo, but they do one thing very well, is they're extremely efficient. And as long as you go into one thinking with that thought process of they are efficient cars, they're really good, you're not going to be disappointed and you're actually going to own them for a very long time and have no issues. I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope this helps you make a better decision when you're going out there shopping for a used Toyota hybrid. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have yourself a wonderful day.